Hey everyone, it's Sarah and welcome back to this pregnancy vlog series. So in my previous video, I talked about some labor mistakes that I wanted to avoid with this pregnancy that I made during my first pregnancy. Well, since I made that video, some things have majorly changed. On a recent ultrasound, they found that my baby is actually in the breech position. So this has definitely changed my birth plans. And I wanted to make this video to help other women out there who may be in this circumstance as well. So let's get started. One of the things that your OB provider is going to check for towards the end of your pregnancy is your baby's position. And it's really important because you want your baby head down in that vertex position because their head's gonna be over the cervix and the cervix is gonna open up and that is how your baby leaves the womb. Now babies that are in breech positions like my baby, instead of their head being over the cervix, their butt is actually over the cervix. And there's different types of breech positions. My baby's actually in the frank breech position and his butt is over the cervix. His head is actually under like my left rib. And then he's just like sort of just curled up and almost like a U position. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, whenever a baby is head down, that is actually one of the safest ways for a baby to be delivered vaginally. There's the lowest risk compared to whenever your baby's presenting part, which is over that cervix, is the butt. Because there is a huge risk to baby becoming injured and to mom. And there's not a lot of OB providers out there who will actually attempt a breech delivery vaginally. However, there are some that will do it, but it really depends on where you live and what's available. So as your baby is growing in the womb, they are changing positions. However, as you get closer to that due date, they should settle down in that head down position. Some babies will do this early on and some babies will actually wait up till the day of delivery. And just to point that out, with my case, like I've been having to have routine ultrasounds because I have marginal cord insertion and I wanna be talking about this in a different video, but around like a 20-ish week ultrasound, it showed that he was transverse. So he was just like sort of laying like across my stomach. And then at about 32 weeks, it showed that he was in the head down position. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is awesome. He's probably gonna stay that way and be like my first one. But whenever I went to have my 36 week ultrasound, I got a shock that he's actually not like that anymore. His little head is on my left side underneath my rib. And I could tell that before I had the ultrasound that there was something hard there, but I just assumed it was his butt but no, it's his head. Now, what does that mean for me and my baby? Well, there's a couple options and your OB provider will talk to you about these options. Plus you wanna do your own research as well. So the first thing that can be done with your OB's blessing, always check with him or her about this, are like these different types of positions. And there's a lot of resources online that you can look at, but you can get in these specific positions and it can hopefully help the baby turn naturally on its own. I have actually tried these positions and they have not worked for me. However, some women have success while some don't. Another thing that can be done is a procedure called an ECV, which stands for external cephalic version. So with an ECV, what happens is that your OB provider is going to attempt to move your baby into that head down position. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna take their hands, put it over your belly, hence your uterus, and they're gonna push on your belly and they're gonna try to manually flip that baby. Now this procedure is not 100%. It has about a 30 to 50% success rate. And if this is offered to you, you definitely wanna make sure that you research it and that you ask your OB provider about all the questions that you have because you wanna go into this procedure well informed. And um, for me personally, that success rate just was not high enough because if they are successful in flipping your baby, there is a chance that the baby can actually flip back to its original position. And there are potential complications that can arise during this procedure. Number one, um, it may send you into preterm labor, so you could have your baby earlier than planned. It could also cause distress to your baby. And with my situation, I have the marginal cord insertion, and I also have an accessory placenta lobe. So 
After discussing that with my husband, we just felt like, you know, this procedure just really isn't for us. So um, what we're gonna do is really just wait to see if baby will flip himself. And another thing is that this procedure can be quite painful for you as the mother. So since we have declined the ECV, where do we go from here? How, how's this baby gonna be delivered? Well, what we're gonna do is we're just going to wait to see if he will flip on his own. And there is a very, very small chance he might do that. He might wait all the way up to his due date to surprise me and flip. Personally, I don't think that's going to happen, but hey, if it does, that would be great. However, if he doesn't flip and it's time for baby's arrival, we will have to do what's called a cesarean section, also known as a C-section. So instead of delivering the baby vaginally, they will go in and surgically remove the baby. Now, this was something that I did not foresee. You know, I had my first baby, he was head down, and I automatically assumed that this is how this baby was going to be delivered as well. And I was shocked um, and wasn't very excited at first about it at all because it's not something that I planned and it really threw my whole birth plans off. But I want the safest option for my baby and given everything else that's going on, you know, if he doesn't flip, then this is definitely something I'm glad that's available for me and for him so he can make his way into the world the safest way. So I just wanted to make this video just to give you guys an update about what's going on and how things have really changed and um, help the other women out there who are facing this same situation and let you know what options were given to me, what I decided to choose, and the outcome. So be sure you follow along in this pregnancy vlog. I have a link in the YouTube description below or the first comment, and you can see how this situation played out. Did he end up flipping in the end? or did I end up having a C-section? And if I do have a C-section, I'm definitely going to be talking about that with my experience, how to prep for that, how the recovery is, and everything like that. So um, thank you all so much for watching and please subscribe.